name's Captain Magno, and I'm here to teach you how to sail a yacht. <laughs> shipmates. Now, the first thing you're going to need is a yacht. A small one will be perfectly good to start with. Something like this one of mine will do nicely. Now, when buying your yacht, it's important to bear in mind you should always go to a reputable dealer. First of all, check it has a steering wheel and then make sure it turns right and left. If you find that as well as turning right and left, the steering wheel moves backwards and forwards, then you've made your first mistake and bought an aeroplane. <laughs> also make sure it has a hooter that works. Most importantly, the bar. When you've bought your bar, I mean yacht, you're going to need some decent bar staff. These should be selected for sturdy sea legs, an ample treasure chest, and a good broad beam. A word of warning here, it is not considered de rigueur to get stuck in at the bar until the sun's over the yard arms. But if you take my advice, and mum's the word, I got one of those carpenter chaps to lower the yard arm on my boat. <laughs> know what I mean? Ow! Oh! Oh! oh. oh. I'm awfully sorry. Oh, no. Oh, no. no substitute for experience. You <laughs> like that, darling. Logical dressage. No point in being a captain unless you look the part. At the very least, you're going to need one of these. White shirt with epaulettes. Navy blue blazer. Gold buttons with anchors, front and cuffs. Sensible deck shoes. Shorts. White slacks and a selection of cravats. Oh! Hello, sailor! Nautical hats. Very important, the nautical hat, and here are a few from my collection. Like this one, the fair weather hat. For tropical times. This one, a little more dressy. For regattas and stuff. This hat, for more official engagements. Meeting the Admiralty and the like. And it's up to you whether you wear this for an hour or athwart ships. Like, um, like, oh, um, that, that chap in Trafalgar Square, what's his name? Nelson, you twit. Yeah, yes, I know, Admiral Felicio Nelson. Now, this one here, personal favourite of mine, because it comes in both white and to wear this one when the ship's going down. A lot of use out of it, I can tell you. Of course, regulation issue tights to go with the hats. More about those later. And a personal favourite of mine, a pipe. Adds a touch of authority to a man. Also, between you and me, gives a debonair touch to the intrepid yachtswoman. <laughs> Say, not much wrong with a cut of her jib. Oh! Wah! Poolads, parlads. Now, what I like to do is cover myself in a nice thick layer of goose fat before I actually get round to. Now, 
when you've got your kit sorted out, it's important to understand the nautical parlance. Lovers. Well, this is another term for swabs. Swabs. Well, in fact, that's more or less the same as, as lovers. Batten the hatches. Yes, I forgot to mention that. Make sure when you buy your yacht, you've got plenty of hatches, or there'll be nothing for the swabs and lovers to batten. I rather like to shout, a vast and ahoy. A vast ahoy and belay, I shout. No idea what it means, but it, it does pay to practice anywhere. Once you've got the hang of it, you can pepper the conversation with the odd phrase involving the filleting of lubber lines, the shivering of timbers, and the, the scuppering of bilges. Just throw a few together, you know, try it out. Hoist the spankers, fillet the bugger lines, and grease the main chains, ye swabs! What does that mean? No idea! Now down to the business end of things. The first thing you're going to need to know is how to cast off. A term that I believe is borrowed from the knitting fraternity. What you do is you stand somewhere on the deck of the ship and shout out very loud, cast off! And then the swabs all run around doing something or the other and off you go. Easy. Steady as she goes. <laughs> Hold down on the left. <laughs> la 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 it's the cat ah! It's the captain's responsibility to set a good example to the crew. The captain should never be afraid to lead by example. You see, you've got to know the ropes and the strings and all the other stuff that hang off the watsits. You know, those uh, things that stick upwards. Because that's the stuff that holds the boat together. You know what that chap said to me? He said I was a true anchor. Occasionally, the captain needs to exert his full authority, even if he is at ease. There are times when the ship needs a firm, manly hand on the steering wheel. It's this sort of guidance based on responsibility and experience that earns the deep and lasting respect of the crew. on the boat won't hold the thing together unless they're covered in knots and it's the captain's responsibility to show the crew to show the crew how to tie the most useful knots this is one that i tied earlier no idea what it's for but it took a damn long while to tie <laughs> and once they're at it if the crew <laughs> When it comes to knots, it's the captain's job to demonstrate the most useful. Take the bowline, invented by one of Henry VIII's wives. The bowline is a useful chap, although a little tricky for the novice, but there is an easy way to remember how to tie it. The rabbit runs out of its hole, runs around the tree, stops, remembers it's forgotten something, goes back into the hole, runs around the tree in the other direction, falls over the thing it thought it had forgotten, and then comes out the hole again, and around the tree backwards. 
Well, you see, that's what swabs are for.